Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I bring to you a tragedy, a tragedy in two parts. It was supposed to be a masterpiece in four parts, but well, let's just get into it. So, no, nope, not advertising any Indiegogo, because I don't have to do that every time. Uh, so uh, this is about a an image miniseries called Airboy by James Robinson and Greg Hinkle. It is, or rather was, a masterpiece. By that I mean that the book itself is a masterpiece. It should have become a classic. This is Eisner award-winning material across the board. We're talking writing, art, editing, lettering, everything. And it was destroyed. So this is James Robinson writing himself and his artist. He says he's a he says, no, Eric, no way. I fucking hate Airboy. Uh, so um, this is a I'm not sure what this genre is called. It's like the real world, but obviously they're being funny about it type of uh, thing. Like this is the uh, the publisher of Image Comics, his office, of course, which is, you know, amazing view of uh, San Francisco. It's completely ridiculous. He gets a call offering him Airboy which is not how Image Comics works at all. They don't pay page rates. They don't make offers to people. They're not like DC or Marvel. Uh, Image basically says, bring us a completed package. We will take a flat fee and then give you the rest and we'll handle the, you know, the publishing and the marketing and that type of things. Um, so it starts off with some kind of you know, light humor. Her, her, he's on the toilet and they're talking about, you know, uh, it's, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of Ricky Gervais type of, you know, hey, I'm an asshole. Everyone's an asshole. Isn't it funny that everyone's an asshole? And so it becomes uh, James in San Francisco trying to, you know, puzzle out how to write uh, about a character he knows about but doesn't care about. So he's meeting with the uh, the artist, Greg Hinkle, who is the actual artist. Um, and he's he's kind of up his own ass. Like, they're supposed to be meeting to, you know, figure out what the story is about. And then the artist is like, well, you know, my dad's a pilot and I grew up around airports. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he completely bluffs them off. Like this is, this would be a godsend if you find this artist. It's about a book about a pilot and his dad was a pilot. But, uh, you know, uh, James is just so up in his own, you know, midlife crisis and marriage problems and career problems. And um, it's, uh, it's kind of, you know, tragic comic and sad and funny. And then, jeez. So they get a hotel to try to puzzle this out. And then since James at the time was an alcoholic and it, you know, in interviews he says this was, uh, okay, so I'm gonna do some math right. It's 2020, this came out in 2015. It's set uh, in 2012 and it was made in 2013 and 2014. Why all these specific dates? Because he's talking about leaving DC Comics. Uh, he left them in 2012. Uh, so this is uh, him about the age of 50, 49, 50, going through an extreme everything crisis, midlife crisis, uh, marriage crisis, career crisis. And uh, so he's like, uh, so you got no ideas? Not a one. I mean, I know who he is, obviously, even before Eclipse did that re relaunch in the late 80s, I knew. Stranko wrote about him in one of those big history of comic books he did, the second one, I think. A kid with a special plane fighting Nazis with wings that flapped like a bird, the plane. I mean, it does sound fun when you put it that way. Uh, the artist says, we could do some kind of ironic take, laugh at it while we're laughing with it. And then James says, no, I hate that sort of thing. Hipster writers and artists and their clever, ironic takes on old stuff. Fuck the lot of them. So they start getting drunk and drunker and drunker and then high and then just, it's, it's, it's basically the hangover. So then after a night of complete debauchery, they meet Airboy. He's there. He's in the flesh. They're monochrome. Uh, Airboy is in uh, full color. So then they freak out and run away. And then they have to deal with Airboy's real. And he's, you know, he, he, they're, he's basically asking for their help. So they kind of, you know, uh, explain. You know, they're like, okay, so we took drugs. We're hallucinating. Airboy's having a lot of problems dealing with modern day, you know, San Francisco. He's like, we fought a war for this. Like, I. This is this is what we fought. He, he's like, did we lose? And he's like, no, we 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 won. He starts explaining, you're a comic. We're writing a comic. Something happened, and they're going around. Now, 
here's where it starts to get really good. So then they're back out drinking again. And, you know, as the lads will do when they go out drinking and uh, they'll start talking about their feelings. Because <laughs> that's what guys do when they want to talk about their feelings. They say, let's go drinking. And so in the middle of a second night of debauchery, uh, he gets very candid. And this, uh, this story is, is beautiful. It's very, you know, uh, what do they say? Deeply personal. He goes, he goes, decided I'm quitting DC. I'm done. The artist says, wow, are you sure? What other work do you have lined up? Nothing. I've really boxed myself into a corner this time. Still, fuck it. I'll drive an Uber or wash dishes over the crap I'm going through. He says, it's bad. He says, DC, it is what it is. Lots of writing and changes in direction, seemingly on editorial whims. Lots of interfering. Pain in the ass, but nothing I can't handle. And they pay pretty good. It's just, well, I know I'm not meeting my potential. The stuff I do that people like about my writing, it's just not finding its way into my work at DC anymore. Maybe it's them squashing it or me not bringing it. All I know is I need to shake things up or my life's never going to fix itself. He says, you scared quitting? Leaping into the great unknown? You bet I am. But every day I'm sitting down at the computer depressed about the day ahead. I'm writing comics for fuck's sake. I should not be depressed every day. And sticking around doing something just for the money is no way to live. So then there's a comedy scene where James Robinson knowingly and Airboy unknowingly in a gay bar hook up with two transgender people in the bathroom. James is blasé about it. Airboy is very angry. <laughs> He's from the 1940s. Um, so uh, they get in a little fight. Now, it, uh, it keeps going in and out of this humor with this you know, kind of a deeply personal thing. In the third and fourth issue, they end up going to World War II. And there's, there's great bits there. It turns into more of a Garth Ennis type of thing. But then it actually ramps up the personal. Like, uh, James is very, uh, like, clear about his life and his marriage. And, 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 and it's, it's really, like, searingly beautiful stuff. This is a work of art. Until Bleeding Cool and a bunch of Twitter assholes flushed it down the toilet. I'm sorry, put it in the toilet. And then James Robinson flushed it. So in the midst of their second night of debauchery, when James, again, James Robinson and Airboy end up uh, hooking up with uh, two transgender women in the bathroom, he, he basically says, hey, Airboy's going to freak out. And then the line is, you know, uh, he goes, what? What are you thinking? Don't tell him this place is filled with trannies and drag queens. He'll flip the fuck out. Now, this was written in 2013, set in 2012. And the entire point of this uh, is it's a dissolute night of debauchery. Uh, they're cursing. They're pissing in public. Uh, at one point, James Robinson is, is so high off his ass, he's telling the other guy to punch him in the stomach. Now... There's all kinds of context, but what happens is, we know what happens. It's the game right now. It's adult tattletaling. The context is overwhelmingly there to explain why it happens. But here comes the, the, the fear, is the uh, bleeding cool piece about it. Now, all you have to do is just say nothing. Um, but... James does not do that. Please look at the screen. This block in uh, gray, this is his apology. It goes on forever. It takes as long to read an issue of Airboy as it is to read. So, you know, Airboy 2 came out. There was a little bit of pressure. There's a little bit of... Uh, I, lo I looked it up, you know, because you can search. Boy, I'm telling you. <laughs> It was so mild compared to anything that happens nowadays. It was literally a couple of tweets. It was real light. It was a thing where you just ignore it and it goes away. But people didn't know back then uh, <laughs> like they did now. They thought, well, I'll do the thing that's happened throughout all of human history. I'll just apologize. Uh, and the funny thing is, like, I, I was looking it back and one of them was like, unpacking the transphobia in Airboy. I was like... I didn't realize SJW said unpacking back five years ago. I only started hearing it about two years ago. So um, 
James Robinson uh, issued a an, a statement. Uh, there was pressure from GLAD. It's a, a gay rights uh, group in America. I think it's America. Uh, I'm not sure if it's international. Um, I thought long and hard before writing this response. He's from the UK. But the time has taken me to do, so I fear I haven't been misinterpreted as indifference on my part to the ire this sequence has caused for some. Often, public figures just issue a quick apology, a snippet of contrition, in the hope that the light of scorn will then shine away from them. But those apologies often feel inauthentic or meaningless. And I didn't... Oh, now, now it's becoming Australian, isn't it? Um, I'll, just, I'll just use my right. I'll just use a, 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 a weak voice. And I didn't want to do that. It was with much regret that I learned how I angered and offended members of the transgender community with a sequence I wrote in the second issue of the Airboy miniseries I am currently doing. As anyone who has read the first issue will know, this series is a semi-autobiographical piece of metafiction that shows me at a self-destructive and unhappy time in my life before I sobered up and entered a better place in both my work and the world as a whole. To illustrate this, I portray myself and my artist Greg Hinkle as two blithe idiots pinballing through a succession of stupid and self-destructive actions, doing and saying stupid and thoughtless things. I intentionally portray myself in the worst light possible and as the worst kind of person. That's that's all you had to do. Because, you know, hit pieces on Bleeding Cool and Comics Alliance and, you know, it, it was, God, it was so light. <laughs> you know, I, I literally searched through Twitter for 2015 for, for I think it was July or uh, August, and it was really light compared to anything right now. Um, that was all you needed. In fact, uh, you didn't even need the first one. All you needed was this. And you could have you could have even gotten, you know, some words out of that. And then he goes and he goes and he goes on forever. Just, you know, rending his garments in public. It's ridiculous. It's a sad and terrible fact that the transgender community is what like it stopped. <laughs> this, this whole community thing is so super creepy and balkanizing. Like, stop. Like, some people. And we're going to get to that. We're going we're gonna, to uh, phone a friend, call in an expert on this issue. It's a sad and terrible fact that the transgender community is one that is often misunderstood and mocked. And that honestly, truly breaks my heart. It is a beautiful community full of shining souls, which in a different work, on a different day, I would proudly show in all its variety and wonder. You are talking like an explorer who just found a pygmy tribe. Like, come on. Oh, just on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Oh, da 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 I know this response won't satisfy everyone, but it comes from the heart. I love all people. I wanted this statement to convey my complete feelings on the matter. So, basically what happened after that, no one spoke of it ever again. No awards, no nominations. It was just gone. And the tragic thing about this is that this is like, you know, a deeply personal work, but it was also about digging deep. You know, he even says it and he goes, maybe, I, maybe I'm just not digging deep enough. It totally works. I, it was, it's laugh out loud funny. It's, it's very, you know, personal and emotional. I always make fun of, you know, comics to movies. It would have made a great movie. Um, and it was destroyed because of tattletales, because literally adults want to act like children and say, teacher, teacher, and they're, they're, they're waving their hand frantically, teacher, teacher, James Robinson said tranny, he said it, he said it. And nobody goes, okay, wait, wh why are you tattling? Also, what was the context? Well, it's about a drunken night of debauchery at the lowest point in his life. Oh, okay, so the point is, he's being stupid. He's being stupid and crude, he's not thinking things through. No, no, no. All it becomes is, a, teacher, teacher, James said a bad word. Can, can I whisper it to you? He said crappy. He said it. So then, I went to an expert. When asked whether he's bothered by the word training, RuPaul responded by saying, no, I love the word training. Um, he says, uh, Marone then noted that the trans community is offended by the term, to which Ru responded, no, it is not the transsexual community being offended by the term. These are fringe people 
who are looking for storylines to strengthen their identity as victims. This is what we're dealing with. It's not the trans community, because most people who are trans have been through hell and high water, and they know, they've looked behind the curtain at Oz and went, oh, this is all a fucking joke. But some people haven't, you know. If your idea of happiness has to do with someone else changing what they say, what they do, you are in for a fucking hard ass road. Jesus. He sound now I believe this was said in his male persona, so I'm gonna say he. He sounds like a freaking World War II general. This is amazing. So I don't really know this franchise very well at all. They kind of get into it a little bit in the third and fourth issues. All I remember is a comics scene. That was like the Fangoria size, you know, and I think it was made by the same company. There was an interview or an article about Airboy, which was coming out at the time. And I just remember this Ernie Colon uh, cover with this stupidly oversized freaking pistols. I remember just being like enraged by this. So I don't really know the character at all. I looked at the sales and for a number one, it was freaking amazing. Now it was returnable, so that's going to pump up the numbers. But 19,000 for a number one? That's nuts. Although, geez, Southern Bastards was doing 18,000 at nine. This is 2015. 2015 was actually the high mark of comics. Uh, it came out of the uh, economy doing, uh, or the uh, uh, recession. It came out of the recession. And then it just went up, 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 like just spiking up till 2015. And then they started hiring a bunch of SAWs and just down, down, down until right now. But um, so anyway, just get to get right back to it. Um, so when I was reading this and I was just thinking about the whole thing, it made me think about this line of dialogue from V for Vendetta. I have no idea if this is actually from the movie or from the graphic novel. I don't think it is. So it's this uh, Inspector Finch. Um, and he's, it's towards the end, he's, they've kind of put all of the mystery together. He, he says, um, I had to see it. There wasn't much left. But when I was there, it was strange. I suddenly had this feeling that everything was connected. It's like I could see the whole thing. One long chain of events. I felt like I could see everything that happened and everything that is going to happen. It was like a perfect pattern laid out in front of me. And I realized we're all part of it and all trapped by it. And that's what this is. It's social media. It's adults tattletailing on each other. It's cancel culture. It's weakness. A hard fucking road, as RuPaul says. And uh, it all contributes. It's all one big thing because... James Robinson was building up to a breakthrough. Um, and comics was building up to a breakthrough. We're going to do more than the, you know, the regular thing. This was an absolute masterpiece. And then what happened? We got into cancel culture and you know, writing for adults like they're babies with Squirrel Girl and, and things like that. And pretending things that aren't successes are. And it's because people got scared of uh, weak people uh, got scared of other weak people. And, uh, so I looked at James Robinson. He basically went back to doing the stuff he did before this, filling in on this, a couple issues on that, a graphic note, just generic superhero fare that gets bland reactions. And he's never really reached for the stars after this. And, uh, so I thought, you know, what can I do? I thought, I know what I can do. So, Please look at the screen. I've got Bleeding Cool up here on the screen, and I'm just gonna click on the X. And then I'm never gonna click on it again. So uh, I'm never going to do a Bleeding Cool related material. I'm not gonna talk about it, I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna make a big deal about ignoring it, because of course that isn't ignoring it. You're just gonna never hear me talk about it again. Um, uh, because it's part of this cycle that we're all trapped in. This pretending that adults are children and tattletaling and, and doing apologies, you know, falling over yourself, explaining things that nobody would ever be misunderstood about unless they were malicious. Um, it, it, like I said, it is a work of art. It is a masterpiece, or rather it was. And now it isn't anymore. Now it's this ruined, sullied thing. Is it a recommend? 
Yeah, but the thing about it is, you know, you know, it's almost like I wish I could recommend it in a different video where I just said thumbs up, it's good. Like I did that with a Donny Cates uh, uh, book the other day. I couldn't. I I don't know Thor well enough to really talk about it for any amount of time. I just said this this works, you know, by itself it works. So um, uh, I it's it's still a recommend. It is still a recommend. It's very cheap. It's like a dollar per. A dollar per issue on um, Comixology. So, um, Airboy by uh, James Robinson and Greg Hinkle. A, uh, a tragedy, uh, but a very well-made one. Um, or rather, a, a very well-unmade one, uh, because it was unmade as a work of art. It, it just became something to apologize for that I don't want to talk about anymore. Uh, and that's really deeply sad. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description, and I will have more new and old comic book reviews up all this week. Thanks, bye.